Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen to another historical humans reacts and today we thought we would keep on the tradition of looking at some of the oldest maps last week we talked about one that was from the 13th century but this one's just quite a few millennia older this is the oldest map of Europe quite the quite the title quite the the claim isn't it Yes, uh, this map was created at some point between 2150 and 1600 BCE. Uh, it is a stone slab map, uh, and it is uh, known as the Sant Belek Slab. Uh, its discovery goes all the way back to the year 1900. So it has been around with us for a, a long time. Yeah. Uh, wow. It is... Uh, it is definitely the oldest map of Europe. And the uh -huh. interesting thing is, and one of the reasons this slab has come to us in the news recently, is because of the fact that the person who unearthed it, Paul du Chatelier, was a French historical researcher and a founding member of the French Prehistoric Society, kept the slab at his house where it eventually made its way to the uh, French National Archaeological Museum in the 1990s. And, and it was donated to the museum. And then in the 90s, it was later transferred to the facility cellar, where a lot of the stacks and storage are to keep it yep. from public eye and to keep it in a safe place. But there, it kind of just fell into obscurity. It faded from memory. However, in 2014... A brave young museum associate wandered deep into the stacks and found this slab lurking deep in a corner. Justin, it's a French museum. Okay, I doubt anyone working there is young. So the old French <laughs> museum attendant waddled their way through the stacks. Either way, it was We're just found... narrating a comic book. <laughs> I know, we need someone to animate that. But they discovered the slab, and eventually in 2017, studies reopened as to what it could be, and they believe, or it was identified to be a map depicting the Ode Valley as it appeared during yeah. the Bronze Age. Yeah, uh, the Ode Valley uh, and other parts of the map, it appears to be uh, attempting to map out what is now Brittany in France. Uh, it's Brittany with a Y, thank you. Oh, no. Um, yeah, uh, and, uh, they've even, uh, identified where the slab was quarried from, uh, as the slab consists of, uh, bluish schist and is likely, uh, taken from, uh, Dornanez, which, uh, is a location for, uh, blue schist in France. <laughs> uh, uh, we currently do not know uh what is on this slab uh oh, its I, exact meaning but we do or so yeah. yvonne paillet a professor at the university of western Brittany, thinks he thinks the slab is they believe that it's a treasure map because every historic map clearly leads to some hidden treasure oh. well he calls it a treasure map however he's using an archaeologist definition of treasure as the map could show us where new sites uh, and various locations of interest are uh, that the map would have shown, like settlements and, you know, other things where people live and archaeologists like to dig those up. <laughs> One uh, of the cool so things it is the is archaeological that... definition of treasure, we hope. <laughs> they do mention also that they plan and that they might actually end up doing a lot of... Um remote sensing uh where they would go with ground penetrating radar and try and map out sites from the surface without having to dig into the soil yeah which is very that is true uh additionally uh a few months ago um reports have uh have reached uh, the news that people have begun uh excavations in the area where uh du chatelier uh was originally uh claimed to have found the stone in the hopes of finding context for it. Uh, as, you know, Chatelier more or less saw it on the ground, recognized it as an artifact, and plucked it. Uh, so now the archaeologists are going through and going, all right, it was somewhere in this field. 
let's systematically search the field. It's interesting. Uh, hopefully, and one of the things that they have found with the recent excavations is additional flat fragments that add to it. Um, yeah. Which yeah, I the, guess uh, yeah, the, the stone had been uh, used as part of the a tomb wall. So Du Chatelier walked past a tomb and go, went, hey, that's old. Yoink. Yoink. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, yes. Antiquarian archaeology. You know, it's like, I don't really care about what's in there, but this door frame looks lovely. Oh, <laughs> uh, and the single most British thing comes up in the next paragraph. What may be the oldest map found elsewhere in the world is the Imago, oh, Imago Mundi. Imago Mundi. Yeah which is a yeah, Babylonian Mundi. map of the world discovered in southern Iraq, and it is held at the British Museum in London. Yep. Yeah. All, all you need to see was it was found near Sippar, and you know immediately uh, an English person took it. God. Can we just go one week yeah. without mentioning the British Museum? That is not physically possible. Like, if someone wants to play a historical humans drinking game, just any time any one of us mentions the British Museum, just take yeah. note. It's, it's, it's a double for the British Museum. It's one for England. Golly. But this um, is kind of an interesting um, topic and something we don't really talk about because obviously it could depict something. The article suggests that it could also be depicting burial mounds within this region. Yeah, yeah, because there are a number of features on the map that we don't have a correspondence for, but enough of the features map almost exactly uh, or match modern uh, maps of the area that we know it has to be talking about this area. There's just things that were there 4,000 years ago that just aren't there now. About 80% of the map has been deciphered, so there's some symbols and some markings that they haven't fully deciphered or figured out what the true meaning of it is. So yeah. there's still room to be one. learned. <laughs> yeah, one in five. <laughs> but it's still, it's an interesting rediscovery, and it's something that is kind of being pushed and highlighted a lot in the field currently, that a lot of these collections have items like this that at one point may have been plucked from their context and now have this incredible story, this incredible background that is just waiting to be rediscovered. And there's so much more to the picture that can be continued now that we have modern technologies and better grasps over the field and over the idea of what history actually looked like. You know, I feel like that's a pretty good synopsis of why this is important. Oh yeah, definitely. It's, it's very important because it's, it's, you know, this thing, you know, was found by an antiquarian. It was moved to a museum basement and now it's being brought out and being used to actually understand the history of the world. And, you know, that's the purpose of finding these artifacts in the first place is to understand the history of the world. Uh, so if we don't go around and use what we've already taken out of the ground for that then why are we even bothering to take things out of the ground history is a finite resource yeah. but on that note thank I you guys for watching yep we'll catch you guys in the next episode and we'll see you next time peace